Amelia Long, a researcher here at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Um, I'm joined today by Dr. Tobias Feakin, the Director of the National Security Program here at ASPE. And today we're going to speak about the Istanbul attacks last week and internal security dilemmas in Turkey. So, Toby, what can you tell us about the attacks so far? Well, what we know are the, so far that um, almost 50 people died in those attacks and, and hundreds of other people um, directly and indirectly affected by the particular attacks. Um, we're, we're beginning to learn a few more details now about the attackers themselves. Um, the, the three of them were from uh, Russian and Central Asian descent. Uh, a Kyrgyzstani and an Uzbekistani and a Russian who were, who were involved, um, which rather than playing significance into Turkey's broader relationship with Russia, is more demonstrating, if you like, the number of foreign fighters coming from that part of the world now and, and the uh, increasing problem we have with foreign fighters from those, those particular states. The Russian, it's felt, was from uh, Dagestan, which is very close to Chechnya, where there has been an ongoing conflict uh, with the Russian government uh, over independence and, and there's a growing number of uh, Islamist foreign fighters coming from that part of the world. Um, but it's, it's symptomatic of the last 12 months in Turkey where we've seen 11 separate terrorist attacks within 12 months which is a pace and tempo um, that is deeply unsettling and is beginning to create unease amongst the population. So in response to that has Turkey been upping its counterterrorism game? Absolutely, Turkey has, if you like, been fighting what it perceives to be terrorism and terrorist groups um, on two separate fronts. It's obviously had the long-standing issues with Kurdish groups within the south southeast of Turkey, and it's really turned up the heat, for want of a better term, uh, with its operations in the southeast and, and many hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, Kurdish individuals have been jailed um, or killed or arrested um, in various forms during the last 12 to 15 months. It, it brought to an end a long-term ceasefire uh, with, with the Turkish government. And this it plays into the conflict in Syria where Kurdish groups are beginning to take larger tracts of land and it's a very uneasy balance that the Turkish feel that those groups share with the US, who's also the Turkish uh, alliance partner, um, but, it, but it doesn't sit very well with the Turks. So um, they are having many terrorist attacks during that time, um, during the last 12 months, from Kurdish-related groups, uh, especially uh, in Ankara and the capital. Um, but also, um, what you're also seeing now is, is this symptomatic of this growing uneasy relationship with Islamist extremist groups and how Erdogan has really allowed the movement of um, those who are becoming involved with ISIS and the fighting in Syria beginning to bite back on him because of his allowance of uh, US Air Force operations to take place from southern Turkey. So until recently, the Turkish government was actually allowing um, ISIS fighters to transit from Turkey into Syria um, and has been allowing these extremist Islamist factions to have a presence within Turkey. Um, so what's your assessment of the relationship between Turkey um, and those extremist factions? It's a very uneasy relationship between the two. Turkey has had a huge amount of pressure brought to bear from the European Union, from the Americans and other uh, like-minded states to tighten up its border controls. It has undoubtedly allowed a free flow of people and goods um, across that border with Syria. Um, it has tried to tighten that up, um, but, but as I say, what's going on now is that um, ISIS really is beginning to bite back at Turkey. Uh, now, um, they haven't claimed responsibility in the past for attacks that have taken place, but there's a growing unease amongst uh, certainly the political elites there that ISIS is really beginning to try and destabilize Turkey itself. And, and this kind of security situation isn't sustainable, especially when you put it against this backdrop of um, you know, a, a, an increasingly strong verging on dictatorship uh, within Turkey itself. So is the location of the attack significant? Um, the location, absolutely. Uh, Istanbul Airport is, if you like, one of those meeting posts of East and West and many millions of passengers flowing through there. So clearly it's a significant target um, for the fact that you have many international visitors flowing in and out. Um, but probably more to do with the timing. And over the past month of Ramadan, we've seen an increased number of attacks Al-Adnani, the ISIS spokesperson, um, over a month ago now 
you know, tried to rally the troops, as it were, with a speech of calling for, for increased activity during Ramadan. And certainly what we've seen now is a litany of attacks, be it Orlando, Istanbul, uh, Baghdad, where over 200 have now died there, um, and overnight also uh, the attacks in, in Saudi Arabia. Um, it, it, we've seen this high tempo of attacks in geographically uh, disparate locations. So it, it, it shows that these rallying, rallying calls still do have an effect. But again, it, it still doesn't demonstrate that ISIS is, is a stronger group than it was before. It, its claims of a caliphate are really crumbling. It lost Fallujah very recently to Iraqi forces. So you know, physically it's losing space, but ideologically it's trying to show strength uh, and its geographic reach. So, I mean, I think something unfortunately we can expect is um, still to see these high tempo events taking place um, and ho hopefully um, that physical space will be squeezed ever further so it, it makes these kinds of operations ever harder to actually carry out. So do you think that there's a significance that the attacks, um, the recent attacks have coincided with the two year anniversary of the caliphate? Um, again, that's something that's been raised that um, this is the two-year anniversary of the caliphate. It's uh, the whole ISIS uh, aim is to create oxygen and, and attention for their cause. So, um, you know, certainly they would claim that this is to do with the two-year anniversary of the caliphate to draw attention back to um, what they had achieved two years ago. But but the, the simple fact is is that it's not the same beast that it was two years ago. Some might say more dangerous in terms of the international reach, but certainly in terms of those core claims of having a geographical space and landmass to govern, um, that we can see now is beginning to crumble. So how should Erdogan respond to issues like the one over the last week? Well, what I can say Erdogan will do is you will see him in increasingly strengthening his hand. He's done that politically in terms of closing down any opponents of, of his increasingly robust voice, um, even including his very close ally in the Prime Minister who he recently slapped down in terms of uh, messages that he'd given to the public. Um, so you will see him increasingly robustly deal with anyone who's associated with terrorism. We've seen increasingly um, hardline uh, counter-terrorism legislation put in place uh, which has really unsettled the European Union because there's an ongoing discussion about Turkey joining the European Union. Um, so I think, if anything, what you'll see is an increasing tempo of counter-terrorism operations, both against ISIS factions but also against uh, Kurdish groups as well. Um, so essentially what we'll see, I think, is, is, is an increasing number of arrests and, and deaths associated uh, with the reaction to these particular events. As to whether in the long term that's going to have the desired impact is another issue altogether. Because one thing that's certain is that Erdogan has played this Islamist card um, from, from day one when he came to power in 2002 as Prime Minister. He, he's used that to, for his own devices and I think now what we're seeing is that is coming to bite him back rather heavily. So do you think that there's a role for the international community to play in countering extremism in Turkey? Um, there's certainly a role that the international community can play in trying to shape Erdogan's behaviour, um, but that seems to be an increasingly futile one right now. Yes, he allowed US Air Force, uh, the US Air Force assets to be placed in southern Turkey, um, but even Obama has referenced the fact that he had great hope for such a large country which was looking to join the European Union and, and play a more powerful role in NATO. Um, he became completely disillusioned with what he saw as a, an increasingly authoritarian and uncontrollable state. Um, that, that doesn't bode well for future influence um, when we look at either outcome of a US election, um, how either leader begins to try and influence Erdogan is, is going to be tricky because he will look to exploit that space to reaffirm his position, strengthen his hand. Um, so it, it, it's really very difficult. It's about trying to use levers. Uh, if Turkey wants to join the EU, that's one particular lever that could be used is to um, you know, begin to make demands on him. If he wants to achieve that end goal, he must you know, uh, perhaps tighten up border control ever further. Um, we can look to the US to try and put increasing pressure, but it, so far it seems to uh, have somewhat failed. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Fekin, um, and thank you for listening. Thank you.